Hi everyone, uh, this is Richard from Richard Legend Board Game Fanatic and we're going to start our new game called Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon from Rankin Wells. This is a dark story of some kind based on Arthur and the Round Table and Camelot. So we will, what we're going to do is we're going to start using the introductory module. There's a thing that shows you some of the basic rules and so forth. And we're going to go through all that stuff, go through the introductory module, and then we'll go on to the first chapter after that. And uh, the first introductory module does not show any spoilers. It's just a, basically a, I'm going through how to move, how to do actions, how to do combat, how to do diplomacy, um, how to um, each round works and so forth. So we're going to be doing that. Um, each aspect I will show you specific components of the game um, through, through those procedures. So up and close. So you get to see how combat's done. I will bring the cards out. We'll put photograph the card and we'll do the next section you know, the, um, how we're doing it, and describe you what's going on. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's a great game. Uh, it's somewhat semi-difficult. Um, to be honest, uh, we and my nephews got through Chapter 2. Chapter 2 um, was at the last part. It was very hard because we had this guy that was really really strong. We got him. He's still not. He's still not dead. Uh, he's alive, and uh, we're going to start chapter two. I mean chapter three soon. So it's a pretty exciting game. Um, you'll see what I mean here in a second. So um, let's get started, and I will pull out the uh, introductory module pamphlet, and we'll go step by step. Okay, so here's the introductory module and uh, it says here start here this is open play guide will help you set up and start your first single player adventure in Avalon and teach you all the basic game rules built for approximately an hour of play it does not include any spoilers for the main campaign okay so we are going to read um, a specific um, thing they have to write up here on here. I'm going to bring it cl the camera close so you can see it while I'm reading it. So you can read along if you want. And then we'll go on to one. First thing we're going to do is unpack some of the components. Okay? So that's number one. So uh, let's read the uh, text first and see where we're, where we're at with the game. All right. They still call this place farm hold. Even though barren fields provide little food and crumbling walls offer no protection, the last relic of the glory days of Hronosht is its menhirs. Always adorned with red ribbons, lit by candles, and with a daily offering at its gnawed feet, as long as the menhir repels the weirdness, the townsfolk are ready to endure anything. But last night the weirdness comes closer than ever before. A man was lost, following the, the call of his future self. A house on the outskirts of town has turned inside out, its furniture grown into a bloated outer shell, like barnacles on the side of a boat. For many hours the air tasted of metal and sour milk. Now people say your guardian men here is failing like many other all over the land. For you, the light was even worse. I mean, even, I'm sorry. For you, the night was even worse. The festering wound in your side throbbed as if something tried to tear, tear itself free and join the rolling clouds of weird outside of the town. In the morning, a boy comes running to the shack to your shack. Master Effort needs to see you. Move your big goof. You chase that boot away with a well aimed throw of a boot. You immediately start to regret it as the boot lands in the deep puddle outside your door. 
Alright, so that is the starting of our adventure. We had to find, go see uh, Master Effort. So, let's go to part one. Unpack your malts. Okay, so it says to start, take your character models, the four on top, one men here model, the big uh, statue that we see, and one dial octagonal plastic coin out of the box. The four travelers are the characters available in the game, unlikely heroes, ordinary people on the island, each carrying a taint that made it poss impossible for them to join the party of the champions that we see left their hometown. And the champions went to look and see what's going on with the, the uh, weirdness because that's one of the most important things they're trying to get that all taken care of so people can live in harmony in the land and we'll have to worry about it. Bjar is a local smith known for his short temper. He does his, his best to conceal a festering unhealable wound in the side received under mysterious circumstances. And that is the guy we're talking about right now that we're going to be using for the introductory adventure. Uh, Ailey is an outcast whose entire family perished in the weirdness. She makes a modest living supplying healing and herbs and roots to the locals. Maggot is a renegade of the Druid Order whose innate powers are curbed by the destructive addition to hallucinogenic uh, mixtures and mushrooms. A rave is a simple farmer with not so simple past. He used to be a mercenary who bloodied his hands one too many times and now a mysterious curse follows him. The hooded uh, statue is the men here. Its origin and purpose will be revealed during your adventure, but for now you should know that you can only explore parts of the island in the range of the active men here. Each man here has a space to hold a dial. His octagonal tokens have several purposes. They count down to the moment the men here fades away. They can be tossed like coins and are used in many special rules. In this open and play tutorial, you will play as Bior. Bior high health and combat prowess can save inexperienced players from some of the mistakes they're bound to make on the first journey, while his crafting action provides decent starting equipment. Set Bior model, a man carrying the hammer, one man here and one dial in front of you, but put the rest of the model back in the box. Okay, so let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to start with the one man here, one of the coins, one man here, and my character with the hammer. That's a Bjor. Alright, the next thing we have to do is unpack the universal markers. Alright, the red and universal markers are used in many different ways throughout the game. Remove some from the box and set them aside in the pile. The purple markers have a value of five red markers and are used and represent large piles of resources. Leave them in the box for now. Okay, so I can take the purple away and I can use that for now. Put that back in the bag. Okay, so those You'll see what we're going to be using those in just a few moments, okay? Alright, so the next one, number three, is take the blue tra uh, character tray out. Take the blue character tray above out of the box. You can find the full explanation of icons on the character tray in the rule book. The most important part of the tray is the triple track. And we're talking about this track right here. Alright? and uh, manages your energy, that will be your left column there, um, and that's your basic stamina consumed by travel, combat, and exploration. It is generated each day as long as you eat food and rest. Health is the middle one, your physical condition. Your energy can never be higher than your health. Whenever the health reaches the red zone, you're on the brink of death and, t and attach the, your dying card to your character tray. Now that's not a good thing, so we need to keep our health as best as possible. Terror is the third one, third column, and your creeping madness. Once it reaches the top, you start to go insane, making any actions difficult. 
Additionally, if your terror is higher than your health, your panic in combat and diplomacy. And we'll explain that later on when it happens. Whenever your terror reaches the red zone, you're on the brink of madness and attach the, your growing insane card to your character tray. Alright, so that is the expiration of... Um, oh, I'll just get, go through some other, some other things really quick. Uh, combat uh, tributes are your aggression, your courage, and your practicality. So whatever character you have is going to be different for each one and it's, it depends on how your cards work that you're going to be using during the game. So these are your combat. Now your diplomacy on the other side and you have empathy, caution, and spirituality. And these are different also with the, each character that you use. So this could be up to four players playing. Uh, so we're going to set this up via the character that we're going to be using. And that's what our next section is, is set up your character. Okay, so we got our character card, set up a character part of the card facing up right now. And it says, take the character card, shown above, turn the tile so, so the setup, the other side is face up. Instructs you to prepare how to prepare the blue character tray for VR. First, mark the starting level of VR's attributes. Place red markers in the attribute slots along the left and right edge of the tray according to the instruction on the character tile. Okay, so for example, in aggression, we're going to get two. So we're going to put two uh, cubes in there. All right, courage is one. You got that right here. Practicality is one. All right, and then empathy, we do not have any cubes in there. And spirituality, we don't have any. So you can see that our, um, basically our diplomacy is not very good right now. We only have one cube uh, for uh, caution. So. We'll see how that affects uh, when we do a diplomacy action here in a little bit, okay? Then, uh, it says, then find the T health marker. Place this marker in the starting health track, side track, highlighted by the two red chevrons, slot nine, or the VR. So we're basically going to set this up like that, okay? So that basically tells you we're at 9 right now, health. Okay, and you can see, so then the next thing we do is now find the energy and terror tracks on your character tray. Situate on the left and right of the health track. Place universal markers in the starting slots highlighted by the red chevrons. So our energy level is at 6, okay, and our terror level is going to be at 0 because we don't have terror yet, so we're at 0. So they'll, both those things will go, go the opposite direction if they're bad. So we want to make sure uh, we keep those in that position as much as possible. Okay? Alright, so that was uh, part four, setting up the character tray. Finally, the three red markers. Oh, I forgot. We also have food. That's important. So we've got three food coming up and one wealth to start. Okay. Alright, so then that is the end of setting up our character at this point. Now number five, we're going to flip this tile over. And this is where you used to play with. Okay. You always make sure the setup side is down. Uh, and you can see uh, there's an action on his card. It's for energy. And it's craft. Draws three random craftable, craftable items and pick one only in the settlement. So if you're in a settlement, um, a land space as a settlement, you can do that action. His uh, bad thing that he has is festering wound, like we said before, he has a wound. 
lose one health every time you become exhausted. So if our energy goes down to the red level, these two are here, we, uh, by the end of the day, we will lose one health. We want to keep it above that point. Okay, so that's our objective. Okay, so that's inserting. Uh, the tile into the tray, we're all ready to go. Okay, the next section is we unpack and open the play deck. The box uh, contains a specially marked 35 card deck and includes all standard size cards you will need to into this tutorial. Find and open this deck now. Please don't shuffle it or alter its context in any way. Okay, so we don't. <laughs> Alright, so then also seven, we're going to set up our combat and diplomacy decks. So, uh, diplomacy is on top. We're going to take the first 15 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So we got a set of diplomacy cards. We don't want to shuffle them. And we also have some combat cards. Okay, so then we have our 15 diplomacy and our 15 combat set up, ready to go. Alright. So those can go to the side. Then we have to set up our encounter deck. So let's do that. All right, so we're setting our counter decks. The last remaining cards is four cards total. Um, the standard Tainted uh, Grail game, you will be asked to set up four counter decks before each chapter. The green is mostly used in the wilds and contains natural threats such as wild animals or legendary priests. Many of them give food. The gray deck contains dangers related to the world of man, such as brigands and people driven to insanity by the weirdness. Many of these encounters give items or help wealth. The purple deck contains supernatural threats. You will have to discover its significance yourself. The blue deck is where you find non-combat challenges that may happen every time you visit a settlement. They are resolved using the special dip diplomacy deck. Okay, so um, during the tutorial right now we only have one card, but uh, when we start doing the chapters we'll have numerous cards, so you'll see how that works later on. Alright, so the next thing we have to do is get the seven starting location cards. Okay, you find a deck of oversized cards in the box. These large cards are the locations you will explore during the game. Each of them contains an action on the front and each may be explored. Revealing the story and additional interaction on the back. Take locations numbered 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, and 107. Set them aside, and this is your location deck for the tutorial game. Alright, so that is the cards. So we're going to be traveling on during this tutorial. Okay, the next one, 10. Set up your starting location. Place Garnock Farmhold, location 101 in front of you, above the character tray, map side up. Alright, so we're going to put, first of all, our character tray out. Then we're going to spread this out a bit. Okay, then we get 101. Those will be up here. Okay, 
and we'll bring that up so you can see it. Hmm. There you go. All right, so a one on one. This is your home. Place your character model on this location card. So the model's gonna go there. All right. Then place the men here on a location card. Put a dial into the base. The number eight is at the front of the men here. So this disc that we got, we have to look for number eight. Okay, and slide it in there. And this gets placed on this card. Okay. Whenever you reveal a new location, make sure to familiarize yourself with the action on its front. For example, Canuck allows you to earn some reputation once per day. Additionally, take note of the symbols under the name of the location. For example, let me take the men here off here real quick. So uh, we have um, the symbol on the right hand side. Um, let's see if I can bring that up a little closer so we can see it. Um, you know what, let me shut the video and I will bring this card closer so we can see it more better okay much better okay so the first one on the uh, left hand side there and let me see if I can get closer to those there yeah, that makes it better you see kind of looking like uh, a U with uh, some slashes around it that was a dreams meaning that the spending a night in this location reveals a dream or a nightmare okay the middle one is it's considered a settlement. It means this area is inhabited. Some actions are only possible in settlements and some only outside of them. The third one is your men here symbol. It means the men here may enable, be enabled and placed on this card. So basically you're gonna to get to see this symbol on other, other locations that will help you travel farther because you have, will have to develop the men here and you will figure out uh, by uh, looking at the men here what you need to bring it back uh, to life so you can use it uh, to travel farther. Okay. Also on the bottom of the card, like you said, here is an action. An action is a one, one energy towards for the tone folk and gain one rep once per day. So that means that during a round you can get a one rep if you want to use that action, use that energy for that. Okay? Um, also you can explore the card itself and the way that is done is we go into our um, journal that we have specific things that happen and you take the number of the card, so this would be 101 and you go to 101 in the journal and you will look up, start reading the description at the start and it will basically tell you what you're supposed to do and how to follow the journal all the way through. Okay, and we'll see that in a second. All right. All right, so now we need to build the full map that we're gonna start on. So let me get the rest of the cards we need and we'll do that. Okay, so we got our thing set up here. I'm in here set on our stone location, our characters on our stone location, and then we set up our four other land tiles on, um, we got um, on the south is 105, that's the four alone swords. We have warrior fair on 103 on the left. On the top we have 102, Hunter's Grove, and we have 104, the charred conclave on, um, the right. Okay, so we got that set up, ready to go. Um, you leave location 106 and 107 in location deck. Your kids will reveal them later. 
We haven't got to that point. So right now, also the two, the ones that diagonally from uh, from the mint here, from the middle card, can still be put out. We just don't see them yet. Um, the only way you're going to see those cards is when you move into another location. You can put the cards down, and we'll show you that how that is done. Okay. Uh, there's also three oversized cards that we're going to go over real quick. And these are your help cards. Alright, so let me um, get those out and I'll, I'll bring them close to us so we can see them. Okay, the first card you come, you come in contact with for the character, and each character is going to get one, is the Order of the Day card. This is basically shows you what you can do during the day. So, for example, uh, start of the day. Remove the expired men hairs and discard locations that are out of the men hair range. What that means is when a men hair expires and goes to has no dial in it, then you'll have to take that men hair off the board. As soon as you do that, then you have to look at the locations that are out and the ones that surround that men hair that are not uh, adjacent to another man here have to be taken out and they're gone for now so we can get that man here put back on okay so that's what that means all right reduce all time and men here dials there are going to be times when you will have a time dial or men here means when you we're starting at eight right now so what's going to happen at the start of the day is we're going to reduce down to seven and that's going to happen when we do our first round. Okay, so that's basically what that means. Reveal the next event card. Um, during a chapter, you will have different events that will come up. You will flip the event card over and do what it tells you to do. During the intro, we will be using the back. We will be using uh, the events inside the journal, uh, the uh, rule uh, introductory. Uh, module that we have and we won't be using any event cards for this specific part of it okay so move guardians well we basically we had any uh, guardians on the table for any reason uh, any monsters that are considered guardians and haven't been killed yet we'll be we'll show you how that's done later on but right now we don't have any all right and pick active item and circuit cards secret cards so basically you get to pick um, items for your character and make sure that you're ready to go uh, for that specific part around. All right, during the day, until everyone's out of energy or passes, players perform one action each in the, in the order. So if you had four players, one person would take an action, the next person would take an action, so far around the table. And then they would keep going around until we finish the, uh, the day. Okay. To our, or until our energy is done. Alright, end of the day, you're going to rest. Well, this is what food comes in effect. You will have to have food at the end of the day. If you do not uh, consume one food to restore one health and lose one terror. If you don't have enough food, drop your energy to zero. If it's already at zero, lose one health instead. So that's not good. So you need to prepare yourself Make sure you have food to cover each day. All right, and that's why you want to go to an action that tells you that you're going to be uh, using a green card, uh, green event card, uh, I mean, objective card, and that's where you get the food when killing certain monsters. All right, restore energy to full, dependent, and that's dependent where your health marker is at. Your health marker is at, let's say, 5. Well, you're not going to get the full potential of your energy. So you'll see that when we go through the, uh, the uh, adventure here. All right. If you're exhausted, restore 4 points of energy instead. Okay, so if you're exhausted, for example, for BR, remember, he's going to also lose 1 health because he's exhausted. We don't want to get him exhausted at all if we can't. Advantage your character by spending experience. Well, we don't have any experience yet, but uh, we will. And then modify your decks, so you can put the, those cards into your decks that you, uh, you got advanced experience for. 
If you're in a location with a sleeping icon, read the dream. If you are going insane, you will read the nightmare instead. Nightmares are bad. You don't want to do the nightmares if you don't have to. And then start the next day, go to stage one. So you start all over. So that's basically how an order of a day goes. All right, on the other side of the thing are your action overviews. And you can do explore, flip your uh, location card. You don't really need to flip the uh, location cards in this game. Uh, you basically go to the journal for that specific uh, land card and you just go through it. Travel, uh, that's one energy per, per lo uh, location. All right, and check if this is reveals any new locations. So when you move to another location, you're going to see if you can put any more out. If you have the men hairs out there, yeah, you can put the ones around that, that men hair. Okay? And we'll see that too. Uh, also, uh, check for any rolls marked with a lightning bolt. If you go to a space that has a lightning bolt, you will have to take that action right away. Okay? So make sure you pay attention to that. All right, location action. Use the location on the front of your location card. Well, there are some locations that have different actions on them, different energy levels. So you have to see if you can afford it, you can do that. Um, with the zero actions, zero energy, you can inspect the men here. So uh, when you form this, you're only in the location with the men here icon. So you go to the journal and it will basically tell you Hey, this is uh, this man here needs this, this, and this. May need food. It may need uh, reputation. It may need wealth. It needs all types of things. So you're going to write these things down so you remember the next time you go to that space, so you understand how you can re-energize that man here. Okay. And character secret item actions. Use an action. Print it on your character's tile or on one of your cards. So one of your cards may have an action that you can use or your action on your character card, a character board. And then uh, you also pass, can pass, end your day. You can't perform any actions until the next start of the day. So then basically if you pass, you say you don't want to go any further, you're done for the day, that's it, you're done. Okay, so that's the first card. All right, the second card, we'll go more in detail about these. I'm just going to show you these. This is the combat overview. This is basically how combat is done. And we'll go into that in more detail when we go into the uh, um, adventure. So I'm just going to show you. And then the other side has your dip diplomacy overview. So you have that there. Then the next card you have is your icon glossary. It gives you uh, basically a overview of different icons that are on uh, the land cards. So you can use that. You can also, um, uh, it also shows the character advancement and what you can do with that. With, you have two experience up to 10. Okay, so basically that's uh, that on that part of the card. Then you also have in combat and diplomacy icons they can use for your combat and your diplomacy cards and it will sh show you specific icons for those cards. And we'll explain those during the combat and diplomacy phases when we get into them. Okay? All right, and also uh, enemy traits. This is important. Some enemies will have different traits and you will see this in more in the later versions of the chapters. Some will, uh, some as you come in contact will have specific traits that will do certain things at the start of the round, maybe during the round, and so forth. But you will have to read those before you start the combat. Okay? So we'll go more into that when we get to it. Alright, so those are the three cards. Okay, so this is the way it should be set up. We have our um, counter cards here. We have our combat cards for the character. We have our diplomacy cards. We have our land area. And we have our other location cards, and then we have our red uh, cubes that we will use later on. Okay, so we're all set up, ready to go. Alright, so that is it. The standard game of Tandy Crow makes use of any many other components, such as story event cards that provide you with quests or chapter setup cards. However, this tutorial, everything you need will be found in the procedure brochure. 
and in the tutorial explanation journal that will be referenced later. If you haven't yet read the story introduction at the start of the guide, so do so, do so now. Then go to the next page and start your journey. Alright, well, so we're set. Okay. Okay, so we um, get to a point where you have to show something specific. I will, I will go into those cards and bring them closer. Alright, so uh, first thing is part one, start of the day. It is now dawn. BR is ready to start his journey. Perform your first start of the day routine. So we, like we said, uh, we're following the order of this on the green help card, this card here. So uh, the card first asks you to remove expired men hairs and location out of men hair range. The only men here on the map has a dial. It's not expired. And I'll reveal locations adjacent to men hair. You don't discard them. So we don't have any expired men hairs right now, so we're good. Next thing we do is now reduce the man hair dial by one. So we take the man hair, and this is really a kind of a, you move it to seven. So now we have seven days left. Okay? Place that back. All right? And matches time tokens, but there are no, none in play now, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, in the standard game, you would now reveal a event card, but this tutorial has its own event card printed below. So what we have to do is our quest is to speak with Canuck's blacksmith effort. So we're on Canuck's space already. So hint, to meet effort you have to explore the Canuck farm home location. There are, okay, so basically we will have to explore this location here. Alright? There are no gardens to move, and you don't have any items, so you may skip the remaining start of the day steps. Okay, so we don't have any guardians. All right, and uh, yeah, and no items to pick up, so we're fine. All right, part two. First exploration. So after the start of the day, the characters may perform actions. Each action is tainted grail, is marked with a special icon, that also shows its cost. As his first action, BR should visit Effort. To do so, explore the Connacht Farm Hall location. To initiate this action, we have, like we, when we explore a space, we have to put do one uh, energy. So we take this and we move this down to five. Okay? And in the standard game, you will explain you direct your text to on the other side of the location card, but this, or through the journal. So I would, that's what I recommend you do, because then you have to move everything off, lift the card over. It's not really that, really, uh, that feasible, I found out. So it's best just to use the journal. So we're going to go to the journal here, and we'll start reading. All right. And we're going to go all the way to the back, because that's where the... Exploration Journal is. Okay. Put this over here for now. And let me bring this closer so you can see what this is all about. Alright? And we'll show you how this is going. Okay, so we go to the journal. And it comes out with 101 Cognac form, form, Farm Hold. That's what we want to read. So it says uh, Exploration Journal entries for most locations in Tender Grail start with the introduction that leads to your decisions. Read the location introduction first. A deep feeling of less loss pervades Cognac. From Deal of it laden farms in the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. The men here in the market is nearly ex extinguished. Still this place is the only home you ever knew. Now you are ready to choose what to do in this location. Below are two options redirecting you to two different verses, paragraphs. Each has a requirement. The first time you come here, you are only able to choose the first option because the second one requires a specific part of the status story triggered 
on your tutorial save sheet. If you have, are here for the second time, you should already have part two of the required status, so only the second option is accessible to you. Make a choice now. So we're going to speak with the master only if you don't have any part of the surprise and errand status. Go to verse one. Okay, so we're going to go to verse one here. Hold on one sec. Okay, so it says here, Epper is up earlier than usual. As you enter, he hides a large pack behind a curtain and turns to you with a wild smile. You're here, you here, lad? Good. Hope you're ready to stretch your legs a bit. I hear a star fell near whitening and a local tanner picked it up. It's a solid ingot, large as your dingy head. I'd rather not have it fall into the hands of some other smith. You nod. Falling stars are a bad omen for most simple folk, but they always excite blacksmiths and armorers. After all, the legendary axe caliber was forged from one of these gold shards of, dis of the dis distant skies. Soon you depart, walking down the sloping fields toward the mist-covered forest. With some rations, your trusty hammer, a purse of silver Alfred gave you, before stepping into the shadow of the trees. You take one last look back at the ancient statue towering over shacks and houses. How much longer can this tired old thing protect Gnogic? Gain part one of the surprising Aaron's game status and gain one wealth. Alright, so I basically on my journal, my introduction module here, I will mark it as saying we got number one. Alright, so I'll put that on the last page. Alright, and then we also get one wealth to put on our character card. Well, now we have two. Okay. Expiration in, so we're going to stop. All right, so we're at part three, first travel, and your exploration is now finished and you have a new task. It's time to start moving your towards its destination, the cursed farm hole known as Whitening, as you know from the exploration journal. The Whitening is northeast of your village. To plan a journey, let's study all revealed locations. To the east, right here, is Char Conclave. A dangerous place that will trigger an automatic encounter as soon as Bjorn enters it. A roll marked with a lightning icon. To the north is Hunter's Grove, a place where Bjorn can gather some food. This looks better, doesn't it? So we're going to perform a travel action. So basically we pay one more energy and moving our character over to Hunter's Grove. All right. As you ride there, check if there are any locations connected to the Hunter's Grove that you could reveal. You may reveal any locations connected to the current location with direction keys. The numbers on the edge of the card. For more information, see page 10 of the rulebook. So basically what's going to happen is, because we see how the men hurt, we can get these two locations here on this side. So we got 106 and 107. So 106. The four drill amounts will be put here. This one has another man here on this card. And so does Whitney. He also has another man here. Alright? So, got that. Alright. So we put those down. So in this case, you would attach in the range of the active. Well, let me read the rest of this. So in the range of an active man here, they are adjacent either in a straight line or di diagonally to a location with a man here model. In this case, you should attach location 106, four drill mounts on the on the on west side, and 107 whitening to the sides of the Hunter's Grove. Both meet the criteria mentioned above. Do not attach location 113 on top of Hunter's Grove, as it would be too far for your only men here. Okay. Part four, first location action. 
Your always new location has an action called gather food. Food is an important resource that consume at the end of each day. So gathering more won't hurt. To activate the location action, it costs us two energy. So we'll move two energy. So one, two. So we're at almost exhausted. If we get more energy, we'll be exhausted. So we want to make sure we don't do that. So uh, this gains two food. So now we have a total of five food. All right. And then we draw the green counter. Now this is where we're going to go and we're going to show you how this works. So let me go, uh, stop the video, I'm going to put the cards out and show you how this whole thing works. Alright? So this is our first combat turn. So read the encounter card carefully. So basically if you look at this card, this is a starting card. It will show you something. Encounter value, you need that many red uh, cubes to win. So we need four total. And the two big keys are place the first card you play here. So we're going to place a card on this specific, right next to this card. And let's see, we're going to use our combat cards that we have available in our, in our, in our uh, card deck. Alright. Also have a constant pull for every uh, gain red cube. So we put our cubes right there on the side of the car, side of the card. And then we have a combat table. The number of cubes determines the enemy's attack. So at the time we're done with our combat round, we're going to determine what's going to, what they're going to do. All right. So read the encounter card carefully. To win, uh, you need to gather a number of markers in the combat pool equal to the higher than the encounter value. To gain these markers, you have played combat cards from your hand. Prepare two help cards, one with a combat overview, and we sh I showed you that earlier, and um, then we're going to talk more extensively now about it, and the con combat and di diplomacy icons. Now let's go through the step-by-step -step following the combat overview help card. Alright, so... We are going to put this, now that we got seen that, I'm going to increase this up a little bit. And I'm going to bring these two cards over here. Alright. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Get down a little bit for the combat cards. Okay, so the start of the day. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. Okay, let's go back. I'll cut that out. Okay. So. Remember, if you want to know more, you can find detailed descriptions of the cards and icons in the combat section, page 14 of the rulebook. We don't really need to do that. So, first thing we're going to do is, for the combat round, is we're going to draw three cards from our combat deck. So, we're going to get three cards from our hand. Okay. If you did temp, well, uh, I'll read that. You don't have to check the counter trait, it has none. And you don't need to pick an active character, you're alone, so only BR can activate. You can also ignore the delayed ability step, there aren't any abilities in this play yet. Time to fight. Play the attack card. Attach it to the right edge of the counter card as seen above. This causes both halves of the aggression uh, key and the bottom golden key to join. So we're going to use the attack card that I have. And so I'm going to increase this up a little bit. So we can see it all. 
Let me go back and turn it off. Okay, so we're going to use the attack card. And we're going to basically plant it right next to this card. And you can see that the aggression marker, he, uh, because you have two aggression, you're fine. Um, you get one cube. So basically, that cube is going to be set over here to the side. So we have one out of four cubes so far. All right, on the bottom, we also get another cube for the free key. And that's always free, usually, um, in any of the cards. So, we're gonna, you know, so we have two, all right, two key. Now, we see a skull there, and it says plus one wound. Okay, this is going to happen if we um, have to... Um, stop our combat. But right now, we're still doing our own combat. So, um, we're going to put a time marker on the card because this is used at the beginning of the next round if we stop here. So, we're going to put a, one of these gray markers on here and this gets placed right there next to that action. So, if we do use that card, and we get the next round, we will draw another card out of our hand. Okay? So. Alright, so then, uh, after we do that, we also can get a type of, the action is called, um, bonus action. The symbol. It's kind of a grayish uh, card with a lightning bolt. So we have to figure out, maybe we can get one other card on here so we can do that. So we're going to use Ignore Pain. And that will be the next card. So let's bring this out a little bit. Okay. Well, we'll bring it out a little bit. We'll move it. Let me adjust it back and we'll come right back. Okay, so we're going to use Ignore Pain. So we're going to take this and we're going to put this card on here. Because we put this card over this time delay thing, this time token, we take it off and we place this here. And if you look, this is the, this is uh, an extra card. We also have this that gives us a free action. So we can do the one on the bottom, so we get to draw another card off our deck. Okay, so so far we still got two and we're still going strong on our combat turns. So now we need uh, so the ignore pain says you gain one red block for every point of damage received. Okay, that's when they do the combat turn. So we're going to proceed to the next phase of the combat round. So what happens is, after that, um, you play our cards, the enemy will do his attack. So his attack, because we got two, uh, he will give us one wound. Alright? So we take one health off of our character card. So now we're at eight, but we get also one more cube the place onto our combat. So we have three total now. Okay? Alright. Then you do a quick victory check, but we, we, we have only three we only have three uh, token so we still need one more. Alright, so we do our second combat turn. So the next turn begins, you could, you basically, because we have two cards left, we're going to get grab one more. Alright, one more card. Alright, and then um, we're going to use 
Next turn begins, you could finish the battle quickly with powerful blow, but what would mean losing energy on the stated card because it would make us lose one energy. We don't want to do that because we're at, already at two energy and we don't want to go down one more because we'll get exhausted and we'll have, lose one health. So, we uh, looked at our cards and we're looking at, at throw, the throw card. Okay. Is it a Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the throw card. I'm sorry. I didn't think it's it. When we take that throw card. And we're going to place that right here. Oh, I'm going to use Battle Cry first. I'm sorry. You're going to use Battle Cry first. All right, so we're going to place that there. And we get one more card. Alright, so pick another card. Then we're going to use throw, and that will get placed here. And we get one more, um, one more square. So basically now, because we have the four cubes, I'll show you here in a second. Let's go take this thing. So this is our, we have our four cubes. We're done with the combat. Okay. So we get our reward. So our reward is one food. So we're gonna grab one more food and we got six food total for our character card. All right. And basically all these cards get discarded. All right. In a discard pile next to the combat pile. Okay. And then we take, remove the cubes and back in supply. And then we put the, normally what we do is take this card and put it on the bottom of the deck, but we're going to put it right back where we belonged before. All right, so that is combat. All right, so that's the, uh, we're going to pass now because we don't want to get exhausted. So we're going to the end of the day. That's part seven. Okay, so. Uh, Bjorn is wounded and has only two energy left. All right, so we got uh, two energy left, and we don't want to get uh, exhausted. So for now, we don't want Bjorn to become exhausted, so we should rest. Make a pass action. This will end your game day. Then what we do is we take one of our food and we put it back in supply. So we're gonna have five left. Okay. And what that does, all right, is we gain one wound back, so we're back to nine again. All right, we uh, don't lose any terror because we don't have any right now. But then we also gain all our energy back, so we're back to six. Okay, if you don't have any experience points, like we don't right now, so we're not we're not worried about that. And your location. Uh, has a sleep symbol that you're on. So in a normal game, you would open up the exploration journal of this location and look for the dream. In the tutorial, read the dream from the tutorial journal instead. Remember to look at the correct location at tutorial journal 102 under throw. So basically we're gonna go to our one or two, Hunter's Grove, and we will look at our dream. So let me uh, bring that um, to the camera and we'll go ahead. And All right. Okay, so dream. In your dream, you return to the dark ravine deep in the grove. 
Like many others, you search for li a little girl who went missing in Kanaf. Instead, you find a mass of what look like tangled black snakes crawling across the moss-covered stone. The mass rises on countless black legs and rushes at you. For a split second, you see the horrifying, horrific truth. What changes to a charges is a malformed, overgrown, beating heart on countless legs of blackened veins and arteries. It opens its circular maw, full of lamprey-like teeth. Next moment, moment, it's on the top of you, ripping into your side and trying desperately to push itself into your chest. With all your strength, you pull it away from the moon, throw it to the ground, hold it in place, and with your boot, crush it with it, swing from your hammer. Then you wake up, alone in the forest, shivering. The round moon burns again. You ask the village priestess and herbalist. You try many remedies and quaff foul-smelling mixtures. Still the wound festers, turning black. You try to fall asleep, but your mind draws on what fate awaits you, and whether a thing like that, like the one that killed you, will emerge from your chest once you die. Lose one energy, go down to five, and gain one terror. Right. The prophetic dream caused Bjorn to lose one point of energy and gain a point of terror. Move the markers accordingly after reading the dream and nightmare. Continue the game, in this case, go to part eight, start of the second day. Okay, so the start of the second day. Uh, before the start of the day, just like you did before. So we're going to basically take a man here and adjust it down to six instead of seven now. All right, and read the next event card. Tired and in pain, you start the final leg of your journey. Hint, sometimes event cards have an additional impact on the game. Remember to apply any rules you find on them. Part nine, entering the white. So we're basically in the winding now, and we're going to trap, oh no, we're not winding, we're in, uh, sorry, the Hunter's Grove. So basically we're going to move our guy over here to there, so we will go and take one energy. And it says here, because we have a lightning, it says draw a blue encounter when you enter the location. So we're going to do the blue. And this is the diplomacy one. So we're going to do a diplomacy action. It's similar to a uh, combat action, but it's just a tad different. So we'll go and explain this in a second. So let me take this out of the way. All right, we'll put this part over here, and we'll explain you how this works. Okay? For diplomacy, it's a bit different. We have an affinity track. The object is we want to get to the top green spot to win the diplomacy. Okay, so uh, when we start, we put a red marker on the gray spot right there. Okay, and stage is each stage. Uh, resets the track and has different rules. So basically, uh, if we get one of those symbols, we move the thing up with the arrow. And when we're done with our part of the thing, the enemy is going to decrease it one down. So we don't want to get to decrease, decrease it down. So, all right, so we're set up for this thing. So what we do is exactly the same thing as we did in combat. And we're going to bring this over here. And we're going to get three cards. So one, two, three. All right. And let's 
by looking at these cards, we're going to start with the eye of detail. Okay, so we will place that card down. Eye of detail. Alright, and what that does, it will give us increase of one. So we're going to increase our thing to bring it up one black. Okay, so we still need two more left. Two more left. So, alright. And we also have a, uh, another time thing. We're going to place one of these time tokens. So we can, if we want to go, we can you draw another card this next round. Okay? Alright, and basically we don't uh, have any other cards could really work right now. So uh, we are going to let them do their thing. So they're going to decrease my clue who back down to gray again. And this gets taken off. And I get one card. I'll just draw one more card. Alright, so that's this. This will be the second diplomacy. So we are going to go and let's see, we're going to look here. We're going to play the one we got, the one we just drawn. It's a good card. So we're going to play misdirection. Let me place, uh, move this. Uh, so we can see the next card, how it works. Okay, so we're at uh, misdirection. So we're going to place this here, like that. And that will increase us, because we have a two times now, we can increase it up to two. Okay? And it says if any cards discard, increase, decrease your any track and lose one rep. We don't want that to happen, so we have to figure out what we're going to do next. All right. So by looking, let's see. We're going to place. I'm going to place, I think, Threatening Voice, how we got, and we're going to place that down. And so it gets placed down here. Okay, so... Replace the tiny voice. Mm -hmm. Suit up somehow. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I sorry about that. I got confused. So what it says here is it's in, this is an instantaneous action. So what it's saying is lose one rep. Well, we don't have any rep, so we don't have to worry about that. We ignore that. But it says if you have at least two uh, aggression, you can increase it up one. Well, we do. Our character has two aggression, so we move this up one. And we're done with the diplomacy we won. So basically our reward would be one rep. That's what's going on. Sorry about that. When we put one rep on our repetition box, we have one repetition now. And this goes back to supply. And these go into my discard pile. Like I just did with the combat. And in this case, put back where it goes. So we have 
still have two energy left that we could use without being exhausted. So we're going to use one and we're going to explore the whitening. Okay, uh, so we are going to the tutorial and we're going to read the tutorial reading and see what we get here from, um, from, from exploring. So we're basically trying to find the tanner uh, and paying for that, uh, if not, if not that, that piece of bar of metal that we want. So uh, on that uh, meter that came through. So let's uh, see what we, we can find out here. Okay, so we're going to read the first part of the 107, whitening. So it says, um, The hole is here, as always, gapping at the heart of the whitening. The white lichen that gave this town its new name seems to grow out of it. It covers the walls of nearby halls with a thick coat. Only close up, one can discover it is, in fact, a layer of small sparkling crystals, like sea salt on the wooden post of a pier. As you inspect it, several p people watch you suspiciously. You shrug your arms and show them you're not interested in their secrets. Go to verse 7. Okay, so it says, There's no love lost between Gunnach and the Whitening. You shouldn't stay here too long. So this area, this settlement, is probably not a nice place that people don't like you very much. So it's probably not a good idea to stay in all too long. So visit the t village tanner, and that's where we're going. So we're going to go to verse 9. Uh, number 9. You ask around about the tanner effort, wanting you to find and draw some strange books. Finally, someone tells you this man moved on several months ago. Angry and confused, you reach the tannery only to find the building abandoned and covered in cobwebs. What's going on? Was this a cruel joke? Gain one terror. Alright, so we're back to one terror. Alright. And gain part two of the surprising errand statics. Expiration ends. In a point of terror, then mark the second part of the st status and save sheet and go to part 13 the way back. Alright, so the way back. You have to go back to Lonic Pass. Travel to Hunter's Grove as before. So basically, we're going we're gonna to pay one energy for that. And then we're going to pay one more energy. But we're going to become exhausted and come back to our center spot. Alright, Bjorn's now back in hometown exhausted. Take a look at the Bjorn's negative trait list on the character's tile. According to the rules, Bjorn loses one health. So he's going to lose one health. So we're back to A again. Alright. Tired and pain, Bjorn has concluded the journey. Pay one energy to explore Ghana. As before, go directly to Exploration uh, Journal. Alright, so we're going to go and pay one more energy. So, we're going to explore that again. Alright, so, uh, we will, oh, we need the uh, journal. So we're going to go to any other section. So, 101. Okay, so we're going to go to verse 2. Alright, so let's read that up and uh, see what happens here. You had a good knock, exhausted and in pain, yet even in this condition, you quickly realize something happened in your absence. Many sad-eyed townsfolk walk the streets or argue in small groups. Startled, you look towards the men here, but it seems fine, surrounded by ribbons flapping in the wind. 
there is no wordless weird, weird, weirdness in Canaan. So what could draw all these people out of their houses? As you approach the forge, you almost stumble upon the boy who usually delivered at first messages. They're gone. The forge. I mean, I'm sorry. They're gone. The boy tells you. They left at the break of day. Alfred wants you to take care of his workshop. You stumble into the building only to find it empty, save by a note lying in the workbench. Held secretly in place by a heavy ing ingot of star iron. Three times you attempt to read the parchment, your eyes watering from helpless rage. It says, Ephor left. Found out without you. Traveling with Lord Vane, Vale, Obert, and Deante. They head for Camelot, where they hope to find the help for your town. You were deemed too weak for this journey. Not good enough. A sign rage grows up within you. Gone are the exhaustion and the pain. You leave the forge and look at the east. Somewhere there, behind rolling mist, clouds of weirdness, and the dangerous trails, the Kanak champions journey on. You're sure you will find them. Each party member gains one terror. So now I'm at three. All right. So I'll bring my thing up to three. And then we go down a little bit. And it says, Congratulations! You have finished the tutorial scenario. You will find Ephra's letter in the game box. It will prepare you for the first chapter of the Fall of Avalon campaign. Good luck in the bleak world of Tainted Grail. Well, that is the introductory module. That's just a little taste of some of the stuff that's required for you to do. Um, just wanted to make sure you guys got a gist of how to do the combat, how to do the diplomacy, and how to adjust your character card. Okay, so that's basically how everything works. Uh, this is the letter for BR. Each, each character has his own letter. And you read this before the first chapter, um, whoever the, whichever character you're playing, you get to read it privately. Um, but we will probably do, do BR because BR is the most, uh, I think one of the uh, strongest characters and right now I don't trust any of the other ones right now because I played one by myself and didn't work well. We'll try using BR, I think BR is a good one. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and uh, if there is another character you guys would want me to play uh, for this first chapter, um, just give me a holler, comment. If you guys already played the game or you already know there's some character you want to know how it works, uh, we can do that. Um, otherwise, um, that is the introductory module. I hope you enjoyed it and um, I will be back. Um, on the uh, next uh, quest on uh, Journey in the Dark in a few weeks. Um, I'll probably play one other game before I go uh, play another the chapter one of this. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't, just make sure you give me comments of how, how everything's going because if I don't get enough comments it's kind of hard for me to improve my channel. So. Uh, I would love comments from you guys, what games you would like to play. I always say this and uh, I don't get any, I've been looking for comments, haven't seen any. Please uh, reply to some of my videos to tell me what I could do better or if there's something you want to see differently, uh, you know, just anything, any suggestions, okay? Alright, so thank you for watching this. Uh, Appreciate you guys watching the video and uh, 
I hope you guys have a great um, next few days uh, before the weekend. Um, I know I will because tomorrow's my last day of work. Thank God. And uh, then I'll be uh, celebrating my daughter's birthday. So um, God bless all you guys and take care. Bye.